Howdy, and welcome to the TechCrunch Gadgets webcast, live from CES. I'm John Biggs. I'm Matt Burns. I'm Jordan Crook. And I'm Greg Comparic. And this is the first day of CES. Woo. We're here on the out in a parking lot, and we this have this is, beautiful stage. This is an amazing location. Yeah. We're not inside. We're not in a hot, sweaty convention center. The sun's shining. We're surrounded by a lot of neat vendors. Yeah, I love the booth. It's great. I don't like being inside. It gets a little stuffy. We got a lot of people walking around, a lot of traffic. It's nice. My goal is not to go inside at all this <laughs> whole time. I may go in to go to the, use the restroom, but I'm not going to go in to the, actually the show floor. Well, so far you're doing a good job. I really am. I really yeah. feel good about this. John Biggs, who got here two days into the show, <laughs> two days after everyone else. Yeah, at night and and and. But you guys spent the morning on the show floor. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That was crazy. Central Hall, man, where where it's happening. It's, it's What's all going in the down Central there. Hall? Samsung, LG, Sony, Panasonic, Sharp, all, the, all the big guys. Toshiba, the Toshiba, big ones. Toshiba, Casio. You guys, had trouble, you guys had trouble on the floor, show floor. Well, it's year. just madness. It's madness every year. But usually there, we can find someone to talk to, someone who wants to show us the products. This time, everyone we went to was like, no, I can't be on camera, and would push the camera away. And we'd have to find a rep, and they'd find someone, the one person at Maybe the booth. it's because you didn't shave today. Maybe I think that's so. Why I think that. it's the scruff. Well, the I think they're scared. the thing about it is the people that are actually wearing the, the shirts with, like, Canon on them are the ones that won't talk to you. Yeah. They're like the ones that are really brightly marked with the brand, and they're the only ones that won't talk to you. You have to find someone in a suit, essentially, oh, to talk oh. to you. So what was the best thing on the show floor? Greg's really excited about some in-ear head headphones, well, I, <laughs> of all things. They're, they're really silly. but They're cool. Uh, I was excited about the uh, ridiculous number of celebrities you met. Uh, yeah, I think... Every it, two seconds. It's five. We're, we're counting five. five right now. Five celebrities. Mariah, so Ron, Mariah Carey's husband. Mariah Carey's husband, his name is Nick Cannon. He's his own celebrity. Yeah, we don't, <laughs> very well known. So Nick Cannon, Run, uh, Rev Run. Um, who else? Tyson, the, that supermodel. That Tyson Beckford, yeah. Spears Ralph movie. Lauren model. I spelled his name wrong on our website, by the way. Way to go. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he really appreciates that. Yep. Uh, Exhibit, who I'm best friends with now. He's and he's very, here. very nice. Just it's, a very nice guy. He's like legit. Did he he's, pimp your ride while you're out there? He didn't pimp my ride, but we switched uh, necklaces. He's got a like really? silver chain on, and I have a press badge. So I was like, you can get anywhere in the show with this. And he was like, I can get anywhere I want anytime. With anytime, his, with my anyway. face. That's, that's it. That's like, all he needs. All need. So, so why are there so many celebrities on the on the show floor? Well, it's a thing that um, who was it? Monster. Monster is doing a lot of partnerships right now, and they're essentially like building the headphones for celebrities. So, you know, one one guy maybe wants to do something a little bit more sleek. Wait, so all these things are dumb headphones? They're Monster. Monster's partnerships. So Exhibit, actually, I think his was probably the coolest. It's like an EA gaming headphone with, uh, you know, it has a little detachable mic. Um, and it's, it's really great. I mean, it was pretty cool. It has like surround sound and all kinds of stuff. Now, what we're doing here is kind of exciting. This is a 45 minutes to an hour long show. We're, we're going to show, uh, showcase a robot coming up. We have giveaways. We have a couple uh, videos to show. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. Now, we're going to give away a Nest thermostat. We're going to give away a JBL boombox, and people can win those at home as well. So if you tweet us at CES Crunch with a hashtag, we're, uh, Ellen's going to find your tweet, and you can win those later on. Hashtag CES Crunch, not CES Crunch hashtag, because I won't work on Twitter. I'm not very yeah, good at Twitter. <laughs> Twitter doesn't like the that. The Twitters are, are not very good. So then later after this, we're going to go back out on the show floor. Not me. Not you. You're done. I'm done. People don't want to see you anymore. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Let me so tell you. So after this, we have a Ryan Lawler, Chris Blasco, and Daryl Ethelton are going to go out there. And yep. they're going to hit Central Hall again. Ryan Lawler, who is dressed like a boss today. You can't see him. He's off camera. Top very notch. nice. Very he nice. He looks very nice <laughs> so today. I, I actually wanted to note... Uh, I was talking with somebody yesterday, and he's basically saying that there are more buyers here this year. There are actually more people here. I think it was. I think the attendance is basically plateaued. It's flat, but there are many more buyers than there were ever before, which is kind of an interesting thing, because yeah. you would expect a show like this to the buyers to stop coming because there's no, there really aren't any electronic stores anymore technically, but clearly there are, and there are small guys who are basically trying to build up build up businesses, folks who are walking around on the show floor trying to figure out what to buy for next year. I think as as the big guys pull, pull, pull out, Microsoft, uh, who else pulled out recently? I think it was Nokia. Nokia. Nokia pulled out. HP's here in very limited capacity. 
I think as the big guys pull out, you get a lot of these smaller guys coming in who are doing much cooler things, but on a much smaller budget. They can't maybe afford a huge booth, and you're not going to have this giant booth with like 15 TVs in it. That's kind of why we're here outside of the show. We're yeah. at CES, but we're in the parking lot. You don't need a bag to get to us. No. So the gadget startups, this really is the year of the startups. People can come to us. We have meetings. We have 37 interviews we're holding here over the week. Um, with a lot of smaller companies that simply cannot afford to be in the Las Vegas Convention Center. Absolutely. I mean, I'm really excited to get started with some startups. I mean, we saw some really amazing things. Uh, Sharp has an 8K TV, which is 16 times the resolution of a normal HD TV, and it blew my mind just to look at it. It's really amazing, but I'd much rather see someone that's going to innovate in a way that, I mean, that TV's not going to come to market for another three or four years at best. I'd rather see someone that's doing something cool and disrupting right now. Like that. Like that. Like right. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, we're going to actually have a bunch of people from the company come up here and show demos. But they debuted at Disrupt. It kind of blew everybody away with a little dancing robot it powered does. By, by a phone. Yeah, and it, it's not like just a standard dance, right? It like goes to the beat. It definitely has better dance moves than me. Yeah, for well, sure. <laughs> that's not saying a Can whole we have lot. a battle between the two of you, you and the robot? No, we're not going to do that. That would be top notch. I think we should. That's all I need to see. No. I'm going to dance later tonight, though, on the uh, live stream tonight at 7. I'm going to dance? At Showstopper. We have the Showstoppers. Well, the plan later. was to dance, but Verizon has their keynote, so there's a possibility that I might be a no-show tonight. Well, we're going to go We're going to go to the Showstoppers. We have a live stream running at Showstoppers for all the time. We basically have a seat. We're going to be bringing up all the, we're all gonna the do companies We're going to do this at talk. a different venue. Yeah. I mean, this kind of stuff is this kind of stuff is a lot of fun. We're getting we're getting to see a lot of cool gadgetry that we that everybody else probably might be not be covering. So, uh, should we bring the guys out for uh, Tombot? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Let's do it. Yeah. So we'll be back in just a second. And we are back. So this is something that I spotted. Um, they found us, really. Actually. They found us. In Ge- we were in Georgia. And they said there was a really cool robot somewhere in a basement somewhere. And I went over to this basement, and I found this thing sitting there. And it's amazing. So guys, introduce yourselves. Tell us who this little robot is. My name is Michael Gilniak. I'm Ian Campbell. And we're from Tovebot, and uh, we've come up with a uh, personal robot that uses the power of your smartphone to do many different things. So His name is Shimmy. Shimmy? Yep. Interesting. So Shimmy what can like he do? Dance. Well, he can dance. He can find music for you. He uh, learns your tastes, so he'll recommend new music for you. He has he'll really re- bad music taste. I have excellent music taste. So, if I, if, so this could play a lot of Barry Manilow. Oh, but absolutely. like Barry Manilow, like piano covers, not the actual Barry Manilow. <laughs> you could find that for me. And yeah, eventually you can find that for you. Anything that's on Spotify or any of the other music services, Shimmy can find it. So we did a maker's video on you guys, but explain exactly what was going on in the, in the labs at Georgia Tech that basically brought this guy about, who the founders are and, and what you guys were working yeah, on. Yeah, sure. So the company was founded by uh, Gil Weinberg, who's a professor at Georgia Tech in the Center for Music Technology. Uh, Guy Hoffman is a professor at uh, IDC in Israel, and Rob Amy and myself. And uh, it really came out of research that was happening at Georgia Tech and IDC in this like advanced uh, musical robots. And we saw people respond to these very expensive, very massive robots in a, you know almost human way, a personal right. way. And the whole goal with Shimmy was to try to capture that magic into something that you and I can buy. Mm-hmm. So that's the whole robot right there, right? This is it, yeah. And the, the phone, make it dance. Let's okay. see what it, let's make it work. So John, you like Justin Bieber, right? Sure, I love Justin Bieber. Right. Who's Justin Bieber? Shimmy, play some Justin Bieber. He's got to connect to the internet, and the internet's a little slow here at TechCrunch. Yeah, I can only imagine. There's a lot of gizmos. So the brains here. of Shimmy are basically in the smartphone. You're not actually doing a lot the of processing br- in the... The brains are in the smartphone and in the cloud services. So right now, he's actually connecting to Google Talk, and he's actually trying to process my voice. Let me give it another shot. You guys were at Disrupt this year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we competed at Disrupt. Shimmy, do you have any Justin Bieber? There it 
There he goes. Nah. No. All right. Good. So why don't Good we go you. to a quick video? We had some video of the um, of the shimmy and a lot of the other robots as well. So we'll run yeah, that sure. real quick. Okay. Take a look. Well, since I've, I was a kid, you know, I've been fascinated with robotics and, and really who isn't. And when I met Gil and he told me about this project, I jumped at the chance of joining this world-class team of roboticists from MIT Media Lab, Georgia Tech, IDC. And I looked at their past projects, you know, Shimon, R, which these are amazing robotics achievements. And I saw the Shimmy project is just a natural evolution of that robotics DNA. Our first robots were designed to listen to musicians, understand the music, then improvise and give accompaniment automatically. We took this huge robot uh, with all these mechanical abilities and tried to commercialize it as a smaller iPhone cloud-based robot in the shape of Shimmy. Shimmy is a, a robotic speaker dock. It's a speaker dock for your iPhone or Android. And it doesn't just play your music, it actually listens to it and enjoys it as much as you do. We want to push the envelope and show the world that robots are not only repetitive mechanical machines, but actually intelligent, musical, expressive, and actually creative. Inside the robot, we're taking care of all the low level uh, control of the motion but all of the, the personality and intelligence, really the heavy lifting is being done on the smartphone end. Shimmy, look at me. Do you have hot chocolate? Let's hear it. And one of the things that's really cool about that is that if you upgrade your smartphone and gain new capabilities, you're actually giving new capabilities to your robot too. It also learns you, it looks at you, so it knows if you like a song or don't like a song. It can develop its own uh, understanding of your musical liking and personally become your musical buddy. So when we think about robots in people's homes, we really think about companions, about uh, devices that share the experience that you like to do with you in your home. Ready to follow me, Shimmy? So the real challenge in this project is taking an academic research robot that cost $2,000 to make, it's $2,000 worth of components, and even more if we actually calculated the PhD labor that went into building this thing. And taking that cost and getting it down to just a few hundred bucks so that a consumer, an everyday consumer like you or me, could enjoy this in their home. No more, it cannot wait. I'm yours. So, Kickstarter community, if you want to kickstart the personal robotics revolution, why not back us right now? All right, so there, that was your, that's very professionally done, by the yeah, way. When I, when I went into the labs, it was like, it looked like a mad scientist lair. It looked like the, the room in Blade Runner with the, uh, the guy who made all the toys. Yeah, kind of so, creepy. Yeah, kind of <laughs> creepy. So Gil, yeah. I, you guys really cleaned up a lot. That's really nice. Yeah. But, uh, so, you, do you want to try to show us uh, Guns N' Roses? Yeah, sure. Shimmy, play Guns N' Roses. Oh, there she goes. Is it a she? I think so. Shimmy? It could be a he or a she. It's whatever you, uh, you know, I see. Whatever you so identify what with. Trans can I buy this? Yeah, this is going to be on sale uh, summer of 2013. So we're at CES trying to get those uh, retail relationships to be able to market this thing in retail stores. How have you found CES this year? Oh, it's been amazing. But, you know, it's only eight hours into it. Yeah. So you got a lot to go. So who is this for? You have, you, I mean, you're going to have to convince a lot of people to... Uh, but they need a doc that can do crazy cool stuff. Yeah. It's for robotic enthusiasts, it's for music lovers, it's for gadget lovers, people that really want to give their smartphones some personality, kind of bring stuff off the screen and be able to sort of uh, humanize so the interaction. It's the, Ibo of, the Ibo of Walkman. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what, what I found very interesting when we talked in Atlanta is that you guys are moving the brains of robots to the cloud. So rather than having a robot that's essentially a server, you're relying on the cloud to do everything, right? Right. And 
the idea is so that you can have a, a simple, a cheaper robot and, and, and just sort of exploit the power of you know, technology and the power of computing that people already sort of possess and that's pervasive and ubiquitous in the world. So, so what's next for you guys? Well, this, uh, we have, this is an Android version. We're currently developing an iPhone 5 version as well. And we're moving into lots of new applications and new domains, things like video games, interactive learning with the robot, and, and domains beyond simple you know, music and dancing and, and social interaction. We also want to make Shimmy much more expressive and emotive as well. So, so you guys are tooling up for production. You're doing it in... You guys over there at the factories yeah. now trying to figure yeah. things out? Yeah. yeah, that's right. We're setting up our vendor base and getting this thing ready to launch. Right, that's cool. what CS is all about. So uh, you want to give one of these things away? <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> so how can somebody win one of these things? It's not going to be right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It'll be, uh, it'll be over the summer. So if you want to, if one of your viewers wants a, a free shimmy, just tweet, I want a shimmy. Yeah. Hashtag, I want a shimmy. Uh, it's going to be the tweet that you need to do. Is I want a shimmy hashtag CS Crunch. There we go. And there Ellen is, is uh, and watching, the watching right, now, right now to figure out get, who's going to win one of these. We'll be able to announce the winners after. So thank you very much, guys. I really loved this thing when I first saw it, and I think you guys are really uh, doing extremely well. It's, I mean, you guys were on Disrupt, and it's gone. It's come even further. So I mean, it's still dancing over there to <laughs> the Guns N' Roses. They'll so, go as long as you want them to. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So up next we have a uh, interview that I did this morning with the founder of Nest, the uh, intelligent thermostat, one of the other cool products that we discovered here at TechCrunch. Uh, we're going to roll that and we will see you back here with our giveaways. Including we have, a Nest. We have a Nest to give away. We have a JBL uh, a dock of some sort and a couple other uh, G-Jaws, as they say. Stick so, around. Stick around. Howdy, I'm John Biggs, and we're here Before at you leave, CES talk about the with Matt Rogers of Nest. Ellen's of Nest. This is your uh, this is your baby right here. Yes. For those not in the know, it's a digital thermostat yes. that actually my glasses? shut down your servers because so many people. Right, were right. Is it hitting <laughs> yes, off the we had glasses? an amazing holiday. So no, it was coming uh, off the floor. Thermostats have never been kind of it was a on your face. It was like all over your face. Product, but uh, like since mouse. we've launched Nest, we've seen everybody buying them from you know mothers and grandparents to kids buying them for their parents. People installing them themselves at home, and we had an enormous amount of kind of nests under the tree this holiday mm -hmm. season. So this actually brought down your activation servers for we, a brief we, period. We, we, had, we had a couple hours of downtime. Was, like, <laughs> we, we were surprised by kind of the uh, the Christmas rush. Okay, so for folks who haven't seen Nest before, we talked about this last year. You brought up the first version. This is the second version. Yes. Tell us all about the, yes. uh, the so device itself. It's twenty percent thinner. And it's this all stainless steel construction. So mm -hmm. as opposed to having a small ring with some plastic around it, this is all stainless steel. It's really nice and premium and heavy. It, feel, it feels hefty. It feels like it's a premium product. Uh, we simplified this front face. So uh, it has this, uh, this basically uh, seamless grill. So opposed, we had uh, the sensor grill before, and now we kind of made it flush. And, 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 uh, and even with the rest of the face, we increased compatibility. So we're compatible with about 95% of systems now, whether you have kind of high-end systems or low-end systems, it's just heat only. We pretty much support everything now. Mm -hmm. And these can work together in a home. So you basically plug a couple in together. That's right. And if you have one upstairs, downstairs, they can talk to each other. Yes. And so start. Typically, people over 2,000 square feet you know, have more than one. Uh, and yes, they work together. So when you leave the house, you know, your whole house turns down as opposed to just one zone. Okay. So what did you guys improve over the year? I know that there have been some improvements to the app and then the actual device itself, but what's, what's going on? Yeah, so we did a ton of algorithm improvements, you know, features to help people save money, people to, so people can learn more about their energy usage. We launched an energy report we sent out every month uh, to basically tell our users how they can save more, why they're spending so much in energy, what they can do to do better, how much we're saving as a whole, how they rank in terms of Nest users. It's a, it was a really nice thing. Actually, we have one going out today. Okay. So how much... Do you have aggregate numbers, like that? how much people have saved using this thing? Absolutely. So, so on average, it's about 20%, uh, but what we find is it's all, it, some people save a lot more. I mean, depending on how much you spend on heat and cooling today, uh, you know, it's the biggest chunk of energy use that you can save a ton. Uh, Nest is a tool. So we have things like this green leaf. Uh, let me give it to you there. Uh, no, we're going to demo mode here. But uh, we give you little tools to let you know when you're saving energy. Uh, and if you use those tools well, you can save a lot more. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. So, 
So the green leaf will tell you when you're... When you're picking a temperature that's okay. more efficient. Okay. So let's just try to get it... We don't need 82 right now. It's a little bit warm <laughs> out here. So yes. Let's get it to... There we go. Done. Oh, it's actually cooling now. Yeah. We should switch it to heating mode. Oh, okay. Yes, I'll do that for you. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, that's the odd thing. Why haven't why hasn't Westinghouse or GE or those guys, why haven't they figured this out? People actually want cool uh, thermostats, but nobody's... That's right. So, I mean, building great consumer products is tough. I mean, building highly integrated experiences that are beautiful, easy to install, have great software, great hardware, connected services, kind of all working together. Uh, the retail experience, the packaging, uh, it's really hard to get that right, and very few companies get that right. Uh, something that Tony and I learned a lot at Apple is how do you build things for re regular consumers, and mm -hmm. that's not a lot of things, you know, people just don't get that right. Okay. And what, what other consumer product could you imagine, I mean, how, what would you compare this to? So, uh, when we started, we wanted to build a thermostat for the iPhone generation. Okay. So there's a whole generation of folks now that are used to beautiful experiences, this kind of palm of your hand control, uh, and buying a premium product for an affordable price. And that's what we, we sought to do with that. So for $249, you get a beautiful product that's easy to use, you use your iPhone to control remotely, and helps you save money. Okay. And what's next for you guys? I, I can only imagine at some point there might be a saturation point of nests in the home. I mean, you can only sell so many thermostats, and then they, people don't upgrade them that often, right? So, so, yeah, so people don't upgrade them often, but there's 110 million homes in the U.S. You add, look, look at Canada, start looking at Europe. Uh, 10 million units are, uh, a year are sold in the U.S. alone. Okay. That's an enormous market. You know, that's more than uh, refrigerators and bicycles and Blu-ray players and all those kind of things. This is a mainstream consumer market. Mm -hmm. uh, it is relatively untapped. So uh, we see this as a, have enormous legs. This could be an enormous company. Okay, and what's next for you guys? So uh, going deeper with the thermostat, can we do better analytics? Can we save people more money? Can we give them better insights into their data? Uh, you know, looking at international uh, and of course looking at new products too. Oh, international, that should be interesting. So there you have it, this is the, uh, this is the Nest. Is that the right tilt? This is the Nest thermostat. Matt, thanks for coming on and hanging out with us. It was great to have you guys here last year, and it's great to have you guys back with a really, really cool, better product, I suppose, right? Thanks, John. back so that was Nest uh, we met him recently and he showed us a brand new one and he gave us this thing uh, have giveaway it. to you guys in my hands this is the brand new Nest brand it's made new. entirely out of stainless steel so we can't give it away if I like rip into it and open it up right you just throw it I'm pretty the... sure people would still take it if you open so it up. yeah if, if yeah, you guys would. want me to give it away I'll just throw it into the camera is that what I should be doing <laughs> yeah you want so, it okay <laughs> we'll see about it so to win this thing what you need to do is tweet a phrase, and we're going to pick one at random. You're going to tweet. Just any phrase? Are, we, nope. are there rules? Nest, nest I, me. No, we're going to, I want a nest. Hashtag CES crunch. But if you add something funny, you have greater chances. Yeah, well, that's not fair, but still. <laughs> um, so that's, that's how you win the nest. And we have a couple other things to give away as well. So are we going to talk about them? This or? is a JBL Power Up. It's JBL's new speaker dock, which has Qi uh, wireless charging on top and NFC connectivity. They actually just dropped this off this morning. And I just learned it's blue. Oh, really? It so, looks black in the box. But that's what the sticker says. I got it. Uh, cool. Blue's a handsome color. So, so what do they have to tweet? What do they have to tweet to get that? You want to keep the same convention? I think we should. I think we should. So if you want to win this guy, which actually is pretty, I think is better than that Nuts. I don't, I don't know about I that. I can't the use Nest that Nest in my house. So, I want a JBL power up, hashtag CES crunch. And the last thing are those little things on your, what on do you your why don't you describe those, Greg? What are those? Greg, what These do you have? are USB, portable USB chargers from Nokia. So, whatever you got, if you got a Nokia Lumia or an iPhone or anything else that you might use with a USB charger, you can use this to charge up on the go. So, to, uh, to win this one, just say, I want a uh, extra boost from Nokia. 
uh, hashtag CES Crunch. Or maybe I want a charger because I, I want a charger. I didn't even, I want a I didn't charger. even understand <laughs> what you said. I want an extra boost. I want a charger. So are we going to be able to be able to give these out like to people? We right have one now? more. Yeah. Right. So uh, anybody can win these, and we're going to mail them from CES. And the last thing we have Monster Nokia headphones, also blue. They're nice. They also look blue nice. Thing. They do look really nice. Monster. They have uh, extra cables and stuff inside. So to win these. I want Monster Nokia headphones with hashtag CES Crunch. And we have people checking in on that as we speak, so we should be able to announce winners. So what's next for the rest of the day? Well, we've got uh, another live stream crew going out. Uh, it's back into Central Hall, so we're going to be with Daryl and Chris and Ryan. And they're they getting geared up right now, so they're about 20, 25 minutes away from going live. We've got John Marilla strapping on the, the live view. John backpack. Marilla is kind of the unsung hero of this whole event. He really is. He he's, is, he's and the, I want to oh, talk about him every he's time. He's not the unsung hero anymore. I sing his praises high from every mountaintop. <laughs> every time I'm on the live stream, I'm like, we can't show you John Marilla, but he is the best man right now on the entire He's team. just the best person. Yeah. He is. We he's, love him. He, he's always very smiley. He's, he's, he's the kindest, he's nicest guy, and he you have to understand that his backpack weighs like 90 pounds. Well, when we first <laughs> he's on his this, feet. When we first started this, we had two guys <laughs> doing it. We, did, we started this four or five years ago, right? Yep. So we started doing the live stream four or five years ago. We had two guys doing it. One guy had the backpack on him. The other guy was carrying a huge camera. Right. And they were going, and we, they would wander around for hours and hours and hours. It was just exhausting for everybody. Then, it, then the technology got smaller, but the backpack still hasn't gotten that much smaller. They're big batteries. Yeah. So you have batteries charging or powering the cameras and then all the wireless connectivities. It's smaller now, but it's still not small by any means. I don't want to carry the thing to the cab. Well, and our team has grown, right? So last year it was like two of us would be on the show floor for eight hours straight. Now we can kind of switch out teams, but John remains. John <laughs> he will really be walking for the full extent of the live stream. I think stream. you just realized we're talking so as about much as, John. As much as we, we love you, John. You're to... awesome, come here. John, yeah, come show the pack. We want to see your face too. This is John Marillo, guys. The He's wonderful amazing. John Marillo. So this uh, is actually a small computer in there. It's like a little. It's like a mini PC, essentially. He carries this on his back, and then John, he has. You get over more. We're showing you, not just the backpack. He Come has here. a big camera on a monopod that he holds up like a, a soldier with a flag or something, and he just walks through this sea of people without running into anybody. Yeah, Very I, gracefully. Ru I run into people without any of this stuff. I know, he's walking backwards. He's. I mean, it's amazing, and it's got Wi-Fi and all kinds of crazy stuff in there, and... Okay, so, bye, John. He's like, so I have to go bad. do work. So I that is, that's how the sausage is made. That I don't. I'm not sure that that whole that whole <laughs> that whole aside was. That's that's how the TechCrunch sausage <laughs> is made. Just in case you guys want to know. So remember, we have one more. Re do it again for the everybody. Okay, so we have the nest. I want a nest. Hashtag CES Crunch. Yes. If you want to win this, yeah. on I want the a Twitter. JBL Power Up. Hashtag CES Crunch. I want a charger. Hashtag CES Crunch. <laughs> and and I want charger. Monster Nokia headphones. Hashtag and, CES Crunch. And you can't win two prizes in the same prize thing with bracket, but you can enter multiple times. Why not? So sure. There we go. So we join will. join us back. We're gonna be live uh, here in about 20 minutes from the show floor. They're going back to Central Hall. Yep. There's a whole lot more to see in there. Yeah, we haven't even visited LG yet, which is always a really, really cool uh, area. They have some smart appliances, crazy TVs, which is exciting. And it's different and people. Yeah, different people. Daryl, Chris, and Ryan. It's going to be a great time to watch. And then tomorrow, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning Pacific, you guys are in the South Hall. Yep. Back to Attack. We're going to check out some new stuff. And I think there are a little bit of more uh, uh, startups there than maybe the, the giants that are in the Central Hall. So I'm really excited to kind of go to the smaller booths. I remember last year you and I kind of did that a lot on the live stream and it was a good yeah. time. Remember the massage chairs? Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. That was necessary. So, tomorrow morning, a telepresence robot is going to join you on the live stream. Named John That's Biggs. Be fun. <laughs> Named John Biggs. So John is going to be here tomorrow controlling a robot that's going to be joining you guys out on the show Remember floor. how I was saying it's kind of hard for us to walk around the show? Yeah. Rolling around the show with a robot with like a, a 10 <laughs> second delay. Like a Segway robot. It's going to be yeah. great. You guys are going to really enjoy the content because it is going to be seamless and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> we're really high we're, quality. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. This has been the TechCrunch Gadgets webcast. I'm John Biggs. I'm Matt Burns. I'm Jordan Crook. I'm Greg Comparic. And join us later today for more live content streaming live from CES 2013. Thanks for watching.